In this video, we're going to talk about the magnetic force on a current carrying wire. Now, we've already seen that a moving charge produces a magnetic field. And on the flip side of that, a moving charge in a magnetic, an existing magnetic field will experience a force. So if we build on that a bit more, if a moving charge in a magnetic field experiences a force, then if we put a wire which is carrying a current, so we have lots of electrons moving in that wire, then that wire as a whole will experience a force. Now, let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. All right, so we know already how to use the right-hand slap rule to figure out the direction of a force or, or the figure out what the force is or what which way it's directed on a charge moving in a magnetic field. So uh, listen very carefully and follow after me. Um, there's a magnetic field going into the page. Those crosses mean it's looking at the tail end of the arrow, so they're going into the page. So put many fingers, many magnetic field lines into the page. You can think of this in a couple of ways and I'll tell you the way that I prefer to do it. I know that the current is moving to the right, all right, which means all the electrons in that wire are moving to the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my thumb pointing to the left and my fingers going into the page. Now if you do the same thing, remember this is your right hand, you'll find that your palm is facing down the page or down the screen and your, the back of your hand is facing up the screen. Now if you remember with the right hand rule, the palm is the direction of the force but only for a positive charge. We're looking at the movement of electrons. So if you remember, if I've got a negative charge, which is what electrons are, they're negative charges, we can discover the direction of that force by looking at the back of the hand. So that's pointing up the page. That whole wire is full of electrons and so that wire will be um, experiencing a force up the page. Of course, if you remember that whole right hand rule and the force on a moving charge in a magnetic field um, depends on that, the, those charges moving at right angles to the magnetic field. So we have to make sure that our wire, or at least part of our wire, is um, allowing those electrons to move at right angles to the field. In this diagram, the magnetic field is going to the right, so many fingers, many magnetic field lines, but the wire is not completely at right angles. Now, this doesn't mean that there won't be any force, because there is, if you can think of it like this, there's a component of that wire at right angles to the field. So I'll just draw that in there like this. You could kind of think of there being a component to the wire at right angles to the field like that. And then there's a component which is parallel to the field. So if we look at only this component which is perpendicular to the field, this is the component that is going to be um, uh, contributing to the force that that wire experiences. We can show, from what we know about angles, that this angle here is also theta. And if we want to find an expression for how big this component of the current is in that direction, if we look back to our how to deal with vectors and their components, we can show that it is I, which is the total current, times the sine of that angle. And I recommend that if you not quite sure where that comes from to go back and have a look at your um, vector component calculations. You can work out the direction of the force by putting your using the right hand slap rule, putting your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field lines, putting your thumb down the page in the direction that the electrons would go. And remember we're just talking about the component that is perpendicular to the magnetic field, so it goes down the page instead of up the page. And the
back of the hand would be giving you the direction of the force. So the force would be into the page. There is an expression, an equation obviously, which describes how big that force is and I'll write that here. This is the equation that you'll see in your textbook and it's the equation that you'll see in most textbooks. Well, I'll just make that I look a bit more like the I that I've drawn the diagram. B I L sine theta or for situations where the wire is perpendicular to the magnetic field already, sometimes they just don't even put the sine theta in. So F equals B I L, F equals Bill. I'm just going to write it down another way underneath. So I've just rearranged this equation to help see how it relates to the physical situation here. We've got the I sine theta here, which is of course the, the component of the current I, which is perpendicular to the magnetic field. And we wrote that over on the diagram over here. So I've just pulled that part out. So your magnetic field is here. You could write it around the other way, so it's B sine theta and we're working out what component of B is perpendicular to I, it all works exactly the same way, but this matches this diagram that I've written here. So of course we've got the force measured in Newtons, the force experienced by the wire, the current measured in amps, the length of wire exposed to the magnetic field, and the magnetic field strength here. And of course this I sine theta is the component of the current which is perpendicular to the magnetic field. And that's it. It's just a matter then of being able to rearrange the equation and interpret what angle the theta represents if you're presented with a diagram or with a problem. Next we're going to bring it all together even more and uh, look at the magnetic force between two current carrying wires.